Welcome back to Global with me, Matthew Amrilliwala. Now, we knew that the journey of a refugee or economic migrant can be difficult and dangerous, but it's hard to imagine the terror of having your packed boat rammed and sunk in the middle of a large ocean. And even more horrifying, to have your attackers hack at your hands when you try to grasp something, anything that may keep you above the water. Well, that's the story told to the BBC by the survivors of one attempt to cross the Mediterranean to mainland Europe. Their fellow passengers were just some of what the International Organization for Migration say are 3,072 migrants who've lost their lives in those waters just this year. Well, our correspondent Peter Hunt has been hearing from those survivors who are now in Malta. This is a detention centre, not a dream destination. It's where those rescued from the sea off Malta can end up. And despite the trauma of an uncertain future, they're fortunate. Thousands have died in unsafe and overcrowded vessels. The BBC was allowed to meet three survivors of what's being called mass murder, a crime the UN says that cannot go unpunished. Earlier this month, Ibrahim, Mamon and Mohammed paid smugglers $4,000 each. They left Gaza, boarded a boat in Egypt, and then in the Mediterranean, they were ordered to switch to a smaller boat. When the captain refused to stop, Mamon tells me the smugglers rammed their boat. It sank in 30 seconds. Around 150 people below deck drowned straight away. When someone tried to cling to the smuggler's boat, Mohammed says, they hacked at his hands with a knife. They also, these men say, laughed as the boat went down. This grim account of lives lost at sea has been backed up by the handful of other survivors who are now in Greece and in Italy. What they say happened has been judged to be credible by the United Nations and by the Maltese government. Day in, day out. Year in, year out, the Maltese military is having to rescue migrants from the inhospitable sea. The government in Malta wants a Europe-wide response to people smuggling following this latest tragedy. That's something you wouldn't even imagine in a, in a movie, let alone in real life. But it's happening. It is happening each and every week over here. And this is murder at sea? It is, definitely, of the worst kind. Back at the detention centre, where their freedom's on hold, those who cheated death at the hands of smugglers live with the horror of what they witnessed while hoping for something better. I want to live. I want, I want to live my life. I want to go to Sweden. I have some of my family there. I want to go and study, uh, work, uh, help my family in, in Gaza. We, are, we have no home there, just I want to live. Idyllic and alluring for holidaymakers, the Mediterranean Sea is proving increasingly treacherous for those seeking sanctuary. There are more migrants, there are more deaths, there are no easy solutions on the horizon. Peter Hunt, BBC News, Malta. Well, one US-Italian couple was so moved by the refugees' plight that they set up their own service in Malta, which patrols the ocean to actually help migrants in trouble. Let's speak to Martin Shuireb, who is the director and leader of that organisation. We are very grateful for your time. Just how perilous now are these waters? Are they getting more dangerous as those smugglers become even more unscrupulous? Yes, they are indeed, no doubt about that. Um, uh, in the first two and a half weeks of our operations, we were actually involved in the rescue of over 2,000 migrants. Um, some 750 of those we had to take um, on board during six or seven different operations. So yes, it's getting more, more dangerous out there. It's a crisis, and when it's a crisis, you need to think outside the box, and this is why the founders of the migrant offshore aid station came up with this idea, a privately funded, um, a privately funded uh, operation. I'm staggered by those numbers, 2,000 in, I think you've only been going about three weeks. Why are fishing vessels, maritime vessels not doing more? Because presumably they are seeing these peoples in the water as well. 
Well, the issue is that we are not another fishing vessel. We are a, we're a boat out there, a 40 meter boat. We have uh, trained personnel who has been doing, have been doing search and rescue operations for years and years. We have two remote piloted aircraft that can look for these boats. We have digital inflatable boats which you can deploy if there is a need. Um, so we, we are out there prepared. This is our job. This is what we do. And we were doing, a, doing it extremely well um, under the direction of, of the rescue coordination centers. Are you surprised both by the numbers coming and the international response? I was just reading here quotes from the, the Maltese Prime Minister, but also one aid agency who says that Europeans are pretty much oblivious or unmoved by these drowning incidents. Are you surprised that more internationally is not being done? Well, what we say is that nobody deserves to die out at sea. So as a foundation, we look at it, we have distilled it almost to the bare bones, and we say that nobody deserves to die out at sea. So yes, in a way, we are surprised, and yes, um, we, we hope that other people like us, like this foundation or else other people start supporting this, this kind of effort, which is privately funded, yes, but ultimately the aim is to save uh, lives. Just one sentence, if you could, and actually, as I say that, uh, I see that the line has uh, frozen, so apologies for that, but uh, Martin Schwerer, uh, who is the director of that uh, organisation, actually trying 